And to discuss this, I'm joined live from Montreux in Switzerland by financial and political analyst Angelo Giuliano. Angelo, thank you for joining us again here today on A News. Now, we know that um, NATO uh, not wanting to become militarily involved in the conflict in, uh, in Ukraine uh, for very sound reasons, but the NATO and uh, allies have imposed very heavy sanctions on, on Russia and, uh, and President Putin's uh, uh, colleagues, um, especially... Just a message there from President Putin warning the West that there will be a blowback effect from this. Well, what can you tell us about how, um, how the sanctions have been imposed on Russia and what you see as their, um, as their result? Well, the U.S. plan is working. Uh, what the U.S. was uh, planned for, for Russia and Europe was to, to decouple uh, European economy with Russia. So this is working. On the other side, uh, uh, the U.S. is going to be uh, the main supplier, long-term, the main supplier to Europe. So they're going to sell uh, at higher prices gas and oil. So the biggest loser here is clearly Europe. So uh, it's, it's very important to look at the, the long-term plan. The long-term plan is to have first a decoupling of European economy with Russia and also the, 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 the final goal is, is, uh, is China. Now, um, th we're now 15th day uh, since uh, Russian troops invaded uh, Ukraine. Um, we, we hope that it will be o over before another 15 days passes. In fact, we hope it will be over before another 15 minutes passes, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, uh, everybody wants peace uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, hopefully there will come a time when relations can be rebuilt and we have infrastructures in place. And yet today uh, in Europe in Versailles, there's a meeting looking, Europeans looking at how they can uh, find alternative sources of energy. So has this conflict, um, as you just suggested, totally decoupled the, the energy from, uh, from Russia? Um, is there a need for a different perspective on energy security for the whole region? Uh, yes, absolutely. But uh, uh, the shift, uh, the sourcing when it comes to energy, you cannot shift uh, your supplier overnight. It takes a long time. Absolutely. It is important. We, we are talking about a, a conflict. The conflict didn't start yesterday. It didn't start 15 days ago. No. It started eight years ago. Uh, people need to understand that uh, what Putin is doing here is not to start a conflict, is ending a conflict that lasted eight years, that killed 14,000 people. There were Minsk agreements. For eight years, Putin has been going to France, Germany, and the U.S. saying, please stop bombing Donbass. And uh, so what did, uh, Putin did was, um, you know, there's a saying they say, that says, uh, when war is in the, unavoidable, you'd better strike first. That's what Putin did. So important, war didn't start yesterday. It's been eight years I'm asking all those pacifists that are in the streets, where were you when they were bombing Donbass and killed 14,000 people, where you had 2 million people that were living in basements? Uh, you just mentioned before that over 2 million Ukrainians left Ukraine to Western Europe. In the last eight years, 2 million Ukrainians, Russian Ukrainians, had, had to leave as a refugee to Russia. Where is the full information? It, it is very important for the people to really understand the whole picture. I, I hear what you're saying about the Donbass region. In fact, uh, as we well know, the, um, the, this particular 15-day period started after President Putin signed a declaration uh, declaring two areas of Donbass as independent states. I, uh, against the, the hopes of, of the West who are wanting to continue, uh, and in fact the Ukrainians who are wanting to uh, continue a diplomatic uh, approach there. But it is undeniable that this, has, uh, this whole scenario has gone beyond Donbass and, uh, and now, as we can see, uh, horrific uh, scenes from uh, Kherson, from, uh, um, from Kiev, from, from southern cities as well. Uh, things that no, nobody wants to see. And in response to that, the, uh, alongside the, um, the, the oil embargo from the US and the United Kingdom and, uh, and Europe, 
probably moving in that direction. There are other sanctions that have been uh, put in place in, in Russia. Um, personal sanctions against uh, Putin and his close, his close colleagues, but also um, many businesses leaving Russia and cutting down the economic um, system, if you like. What effect is that having in Russia? Uh, uh, Russia had eight years to prepare to be self-sufficient. Uh, I think people uh, really underestimate Putin. Putin has, has made sure that uh, that uh, the country would be self-sufficient in case of uh, further sanctions. So now we have to ask ourselves who it is hurting the most. To my opinion, it is going to hurt the most Europeans. Uh, when we are looking at markets, well, there are plenty of other markets for, for Russia. Russia is a great partnership with, uh, with China. So it's, it's going to be diversifying uh, to other markets. Now you mention companies leaving Russia. Well, you know, the problem is that it takes 20 years to get into a market, and uh, over two weeks, they are going to lose long-term the Russian market. So who is leaving? You know, I mean, Russians are, are joking these days. They're saying, well, you know what? Uh, YouPorn is leaving Russia. Netflix is leaving Russia. McDonald's, uh, Coca-Cola is leaving Russia. Uh, well, you know what? Russia, because of that, is going to become he much healthier. <laughs> That's the joke that, that Russians are saying. Uh, they are and they're right. more fit. And they're right, they're right. You know, it's just, they, uh, there's something really interesting. Look at the, the sanctions. They are extremely irrational, emotional. Do you think it's someone that is winning is making emotional uh, uh, decisions like this? Uh, on the other side, you know, uh, the West has uh, actually thrown all the weapons it had. Russia has many other weapons. It could shut, uh, shut down completely gas to Europe, but it's not doing that because, because your weapon is valuable as long as you don't use it. It's a show of force. The show of force and the rationality is on the Russian side. And, and on the other side, it's, it's, uh, it's very obvious. Here we have a humiliation of NATO. You know what Russia is doing is not fighting Ukraine, it's fighting NATO. It's been eight years that Ukraine is no more a sovereign state. Since the Maidan coup, which was U.S. sponsored, keep in mind that the uh, U.S. spent five billion U.S. dollar to overthrow a legit legitimate government, and since then it's been uh, the democracy has been completely hijacked by the U.S. and by neo-Nazi group. So here, what what Putin is saying is very clear. People, you know, he's been clear all along what he wants to do with the, with Ukraine. It's demilitarization, denazification and just make sure that Ukraine becomes neutral. It's very clear. So it's going, you know, no, no matter what, it's going all the way. And it's winning the war. Just well, don't listen to Western media. Western media, it's war, this is wartime uh, misinformation. Uh, Russia is taking its time, it's winning, and, and it's a big humiliation for NATO. Well, uh, the, 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 at the end of the day, 